Good evening, campers. Welcome to the Camp Camp After Show right here on AfterBuzz TV. Tonight, we welcome Elizabeth Maxwell, the voice of Nikki, as we cover episodes one through four. So stay with us. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Surprise. Welcome, everybody, to the... Everybody's arid in here, uh, not like a dry desert climate. Uh, welcome. We're going to be talking. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be a new form of uh, our show. We yeah. usually have guests over Skype, but this week, this time, we have the wonderful, the amazing, the voice of Nikki, Ms. Elizabeth Maxwell, joining Yay! us in the studio. Woo! In so now there won't be any weird Skype delay like we had on Ruby. <laughs> and with you, you and Skype, Karen. you can see us back, which I yes. think is pretty great. And you are such an attractive group to be doing. Oh, that. That's yeah. right, the three of them are. Uh, I am your host, and that's Mark B. Donaghy. You can find me on Twitter at Mark B. Donaghy, joined by Megan Salinas. Hey guys, you can tweet at me at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. That was speed wow, run. That was like joking that. around. Patrick D's. I gotta make up for it. I'll go a lot slower. You can find me now. I'm in P to the D's. I know. <laughs> You I hate really you fast. so much. And Katie Cohen. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kiaget. That is K-A-X-E-T. We got the live chat. We got the hashtag ABTV Camp Camp. Say things you might get a shout out. Wow. Say things that you might regret. Yes. You <laughs> might get a shout out. I say um, that every day. Perfect. Um, so we're going to do, we're going to start out with something a little bit fun. I want to do some camp activities. It's the oh, summer. All right. Uh, we're, we're feeling like the spirit it. of Camp Campbell. It's like we're on the shores of the beautiful yes. Lake Lilac. So uh, we're going to all tell some camp stories yes. of when we were young, intrepid campers. Um, who wants to go first? I found a skull at camp once. I'm sorry. And you that's get Katie's to go story. first. <laughs> that's Katie's story. You get to go first. It was... <laughs> We lived, we lived in Colorado. Um, all the middle schools in the district went up to what we called high trails, and it was basically the sixth graders went up, all the different teams went up for about a week. Uh, there was hiking, there was homesteading, there was 8,000 different things you could do. It was pretty great. And I was on a 6 a.m. hike with about half a dozen other kids my age and a couple of counselors whom I thought were the coolest and realized later on that they were in high school at the time. <laughs> Perspective. And I found an entire deer skull, antlers and teeth. Okay, and I was Ask thing. what type of skull. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, very yeah. No, I know how to. I, I, that makes for a very different. I've story. got the yeah. elevator pitch down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was invested. <laughs> I found gracious. an entire deer skull, and there was actually a small museum at High Trails near the cafeteria and all that fun stuff. So I picked up this skull out of, halfway out of the earth and brought it with me. Like, guys, I got a skull, and everyone's like, yeah, and brought it down there. And I still have a deer tooth kicking around in a box somewhere because I knew if I brought the whole skull home, I would not be able to keep it, I love but it. if I brought I a tooth it. home, it would be mine forever. I love it. I feel like Nikki would approve. I, I was literally just Dude. thinking, I was Nikki yelling would when she found really the bear like skull that. and didn't do anything Aww. with it. I'm like, take it home! No, she would do much more with a live bear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's true. Yeah. Orange. Oh, she's going to be just, just right. right. That's such a great line. That's what this show is going to be. Um, who, who wants to go next? It's like we got the campfire right here. I want to hear little Megan at camp. Uh, <laughs> little Megan. Yeah, as we warm my hands I by know. the fire. Um, okay, uh, my elevator pitch. I was a horror cliche at I'm camp. I'm sorry. <laughs> you broke your leg while um, running for things? No. <laughs> you I died was, first? I was at running. I, I would have. She's the ghost. <laughs> um, I was at running camp when I was in high school. Oh, you're uh, what is one. running camp? Sounds awesome. Uh, I was on the cross country team. And so every summer we went uh, to right. running camp uh, to run at a higher elevation so you would get acclimated and theoretically be faster for the rest of the season. All right. This is so um, serious. I know. Well, we got lost. Me and my buddy uh, Heather, we got lost on on our way back from like an eight mile run or whatever, because the the guys ahead of us went down the wrong trail on the way back. They realized their mistake and cut back across. We did not realize our mistake. <laughs> the whole story was here is that you late. were on an eight mile run. <laughs> but I mean, so, sometimes if you only have one shot. So uh, we, we nope. basically <laughs> decided we needed to ask somebody for direction. So we decided, okay, we're gonna ask the first person we come across four directions. The first person we came across was a guy with a chainsaw. <laughs> like, literally a guy with a chainsaw in the woods. And I was like, welp, 
Heather, I'm the minority here, and I also can't run as fast as you, so I'm going to go and ask him for directions. And Wait, you can't run as fast as you at first? <laughs> yes, yeah. because I'm like, look, I'm the minority. I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and ask him so that you have a chance. Well, right. this looks like a place that teenagers go to die. Right, right. Pretty much. No and the funny thing was, when I was like, excuse me, I scared him. So I would love to see the alternate horror movie like perspective of like, Guys, I just I was I was at work and these girls from freaking nowhere right. just appeared. Just <laughs> ran out of the He's woods so and they were sweating and it was terrifying. <laughs> I thought they were different. running from a bear. I was looking for a bear. Isn't completely chill, different. Isn't that children of the corn? <laughs> I'm sure there's <laughs> one where it's little girls. A little bit. But yeah, Some so sort of, yeah. I had to ask a guy with a chainsaw for directions when I was lost in the so, woods. So far, Genius. both of our stories are pretty much episode two. How about you I like guys? It. Yeah. I like it. But you have a chronicle. D's. But I don't have a chronicle, but what I did was... Is it so, of a death foretold? So Mark told us a little bit... Uh, uh, ahead of time said, hey, have a camp story. I was thinking, I did a lot of really stupid shit at camp growing up. <laughs> and the, the one I thought about, um, you know, this camp camp's all about juvenile delinquency, so I thought I would lead with uh, probably the dumbest thing. And it was on my way to camp. So I was a young Boy Scout. Mm -hmm. I was going to the National Jamboree. And I was at a point where, like, there oh, comes dang. an age as you're growing up that, like, wearing a Boy Scout uniform is just not cool. Really? Right? I was right. Nope. Thank you. <laughs> and was backing me up. And I was right. I have no idea what you're talking about. I was, start yeah, little no. little I was just the, starting yeah. to realize. I was like, yeah, nope. And so I was like, really? I was like, <clears throat> right at that point where, like, I was too cool to be on an airplane in a Boy Scout uniform, but you're kind of obligated to. So I gathered up our little group of, of scouts. And I like, so we decided we were going to be juvenile delinquents for this whole trip. And we were going to score it, like, whose line is it anyway? Right? Like, you just get random points for doing stupid shit. And everyone's like, yeah, great. All right, great. So we get on the plane, and this is pre-9-11. So we sit down, um, and we hear, this is uh, Captain Johnson. I'll be your pilot today. And I stood up, and I yelled, oh, my God, not him again. <laughs> Turned around, high-fived all my friends. and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, excuse me, um, are you uh, Patrick from Troop 722? I need you at the front. So walk me to the front of the plane. I literally had to get on the, the mic and say, like, I'm Patrick from Troop 722. I've never actually flown with Captain Johnson. He seems like a really nice guy. And uh, I'm sorry. Have a good flight. And um, I've never yelled on an airplane again. And rightfully so. Yeah. Yeah. My Public humiliation is the best punishment. It's the best punishment. I'm definitely. I would do Especially it for churn. <laughs> mine's mine's oh really dumb and young uh, because I was young. I was uh, going to say dumb a, and young. It was dumb because I was young. Uh, at the end of our camp, Camp Granada, G-R-A-N-A-D-A, we we would have uh, a little like presentation where you put on skits and stuff, and somebody we, somebody said, "Hey, why don't we do Mortal Kombat?" But Shang Tsung wins. <laughs> and of all characters, of all characters that I would play, me, my shape, my gross sure. visage, who who do you think they would pick me for? Doesn't matter because I was Liu Kang. It yes. was really weird. <laughs> I wore sweatpants and no shirt, and I was the coolest kid was gonna go in with the Cage. park. Going with Johnny Cage. Oh, that's me now. All right. but, uh, Elizabeth, do you have a cool camp story or a scary one? Well, um, I didn't really get to go to camp very often as a kid, mm -hmm. and I think I've kind of mentioned this before, but I was forced into Girl Scouts by my mother, oh, and I really uh, wanted to be a Boy dinner. Scout, yeah. and it was because I wanted to do activities and not stuff clothes into a, an orange and call it like a Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> so I got How this catalog of like summer camps to like look through, and I was like, oh, horseback riding camp, like adventure camp, right. like all these things. And my mom ended up making me go to the Girl Scout camp because oh. it was cheaper because I was a Girl Scout and I was stuck making like lanyards mm. for a week. And to add insult to injury, I think I like got like six canker sores mm. oh. while I was at camp so I couldn't eat. It's, so it's like in, it's labor <laughs> camp. It was essentially labor camp. A, did you make a sit upon? Uh, I think so, actually. That sounds really familiar. That's like the staple of Girl Scout. I was a Girl Scout for years and definitely did Girl Scout camp. The important question. It's like a staple of Girl Scout camp. How did you perform in cookie sales? This is what I need to know. <laughs> so we all need to know. Detestably. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> right, right on. <laughs> Knock them down. Yeah. Oh, I was like, power. you can't use me for child labor. <laughs> awesome. So Just you're eat. perfect lick, lick for Nikki then. Put them back. Okay. It. So it. yeah, so Perfect episode for three Nikki. probably resonated yeah. quite a bit. Uh, so really quickly, my favorite line of dialogue of yours isn't even a line of dialogue. It's your grumble uh, from that episode when we when they mentioned the the flower scouts. James, could you play that for me? Because I I pulled <laughs> I think it. I know Nikki grumble. About. No, one more time. 
I love that. <laughs> and that piece of animation, too, is like, it's smooth and perfect for any feel that you might have on any given day. That's, so, that's me at work. That's me at my desk. That's like, all of us every day. <laughs> sure. I think I need that as my text tone. Yeah. Fair play. <laughs> Uh, I mean, right now it's the Transformers noise, but I, I think I can... Uh... Oh, I got plenty. I, I got the whack up there. I got everything. Um, so let's get into, uh, now that we know a little bit more about our camp yes. histories, let's Chad's get into uh, Camp Camp. They should be. That's what this is about. It's a damn fun show. I threw the pen. Um, so our, our first episode... Don't hurt anyone. No, that's why I threw it where they're... Play it a little fast and loose here, ladies why and gentlemen. Have a good um, night. I see they didn't have archery in your camp. <laughs> No, uh, that would have been like javelin catching wow. or or dart throwing and other <laughs> um, pub uh, activities. Can I get some ice in this because like, I was any, just burned? Any, <laughs> mm, mm. Delicious. So, so something that I want to do with this show, because it's a comedy, because it's less about story mm. and more about the experiences that these people have, is, and Tom was going to go crazy, I want to talk about the evolving relationships yeah. that we have between the characters. So instead of just going, hey. so this happened, this uh -huh. happened. We, we got to talk about Max and David, and yeah. also how Neil and Nikki, as newcomers, have thrown a huge wrench into David's plan, as well as Max's plan, for either the better or for worse uh, throughout the course of Camp Campbell. So what, what, throughout the course of these four episodes, would you say was Max's most learned moment, where he learned the most? I think I just hate everything. Yeah. yeah. That one? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Scouts? A hundred percent. I also think the um, at the end of episode four, just because you see something on TV, it doesn't mean you know it can apply to your particular situation. Yeah, if, yeah. if we're going back to how lines define people, I would say his, um, we're, you were the, I guess the one percent fight the power 9-11, and he's just using political <laughs> buzzwords. Your political buzzwords will save you. <laughs> Wait, are you Dolph too? <laughs> wow, okay. I'm sorry, I gotta change the No, but up. I like to say und. <laughs> I, I will say the uns uh, help it even further. Um, but I, I agree. E episode four, when he got his rude wake-up call and seemed to get even more bitter by the time he hits episode five, which we'll be talking about on our next after show. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't wait to see where he's at in episode six where everything has been shattered yeah. and it started in Camp Cool yeah. Kids. Oh, God. I... I mean, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk a little bit about episode five with you because was a, that was a very important episode for Nikki. Um, what what interaction uh, or who do you like interacting with the most as Nikki? The platypus. <laughs> <laughs> Wah. Don't blame me. No real hesitation Wah. there either. Like, yeah. Oh, there you are, Perry. <laughs> well, by, by I mean, uh, we keep going to episode five. I'm sorry, but he just he ends up becoming a part of the group, the three and a half uh, member, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see where that relationship takes, which is weird for an animal that doesn't talk. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Like, I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite. I just, I love the 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 triangle dynamic between Neil, Max, and Nikki because mm -hmm. Nikki is just so inherently like positive and okay with everything. <laughs> yeah, that she's like a really good foil for like Neil's wet blanketness mm -hmm. and then like Max's incredible jaded cynicism. Like, I love that she just kind of, like, keeps everything, like, buoyant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then occasionally slips in something dark in there, too. Like, march closer to death. <laughs> that is the Speak most me. accurate description of being on one's period yeah. that I have ever heard in my life. Uh, I need more might all. Like, <laughs> one of my favorite Gwen moments in that yep. was just, why do you have to make things weird? <laughs> I just thought it was pretty normal. <laughs> um, but I, speaking to that, uh, uh, something that's that I've noticed in the animation is how smooth and fluid <clears throat> Nikki's movements are, and how stiff and rigid Neil's are. And it, it <laughs> even, and, the, and the raptor hands. The raptor hands. Yeah. Um, I love the raptor hands. A, he's a miniature Apparently, dinosaur. I think they said that thanks to Jordan Battle. I think Jordan, but one of the animators, sorry, his name Jordan Battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I think in one of the panels at RTX, they mentioned that he was the one that kind of like originated the, the raptor. Um, but also the, the shyness in in Camp Cool Kids, where they're like, "We already have our shirts off." Like, yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. And then once he sees a girl, he's covering himself up. He's like, uh, we have to stop everything. Um, so, but did they have nipples? I can't remember. You know, I, I wasn't don't looking. No, Space Kid remember. drew his on the other side of his cardboard box. I love box. that that they did. They, he, that was so funny. But yeah, couldn't tell. I can't remember. 
remember. Yeah, me either. Uh, I always chat, noticed the nipples. Chat, we need to know. <laughs> so tell us, chat. Top three things. Do they have nipples? <laughs> One of the last things I expected to discuss here in the Camp Camp After Show. Um, but um, Max's cynicism and, and Nikki's hyper-optimism uh, is probably one of the best interactions next to, as, as an alternative to Max and David. Um, <laughs> how, are we going to see any sort of an evolution between, uh, I don't know, and I know I, if you can't speak to this, that's fine, but uh, any evolution between Nikki and David's relationship? You know I can't. I know you can't. Don't ever I mean, stop us from asking. Ask? I, and it I just noticed from actually watching the opening theme four times in a five times in a row because I definitely me. pulled up the YouTube playlist and they've got the theme and then the episodes and I was like, did I just? Oh, it's okay. Nikki goes along with everything in that theme. She's chowing down in the cafeteria. She's doing the circle of life thing on Pride Rock. Like, she's into it. She's she's pretty much chaotic neutral, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Just completely chaotic neutral. Which... Zest for life. <laughs> <laughs> when, although when reading, do you for a character like Nikki who is so, I, I know that with a lot of like with stuff with anime, you know, it's basically you're just getting stuff like one script at a time while you're at the recording session. But with a character like Nikki, where it's you know Western animation and you get to mull things over a little bit longer, not very long, I imagine. But like with a character like Nikki, do you start to wonder like, okay, what kind of a home did she come? from because we get a little bit of like Max's just like little mm -hmm. sprinkles here and there. We got a little bit of Nikki's too. Yeah, just a tiny bit Unless that she lied again. Again. And that was that was about it. So like with that do you ever wonder like why is this character this way or are you like this is what she is, she's in the moment. Oh we talk about that all the time. <laughs> okay. Like in the yeah. booth like uh like you know Jordan and, and Miles like we yeah we we talk about like their, their backgrounds and like if they had like a bring your parents or like you know the parents visit oh, the camp right, right. day I feel like, like that would be the most that would be episode. like <laughs> I think it would be amazing I, mean, I feel like happen. three sets of parents would show up at all <laughs> so we have an answer on Nipplegate okay. um, <laughs> the chat overwhelmingly says yes including someone with the username Camp Camp Wiki and yeah. Malachroma wrote uh, just watch episode four. Can confirm nipples. <laughs> not confirm. not a sentence I was expecting to type today. Let me tell you. Fair enough. If you haven't seen Malachroma's art, you need to go see <sighs> yeah, it totally yeah. because not yes. only did they do some amazing photoshops during our panel at RTX, they did a straight up art version of one of them. Like so I need it good. on a shirt. Uh, yeah. I was just going to say funny bit of uh, of trivia. Please. Um, my titty twister radar is like off the charts. <laughs> of just like opportunities, like of like of now. like being able to like sense where your nipples oh. are underneath your clothing. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> We're talking about after senses buzz, that we didn't after, dark. after Buzz exclusive. If um, I could get off this couch, I would give you a demonstration. Like, <laughs> can you like, pin the tail on the donkey? We can blindfold you and just have you figure it out. Now, can it. you do it through a bra? Uh. Uh, I, I'm I'm more practiced on men than women, but I bet but I could. Yeah, right. so damn it, she's a right. challenge. My last line of defense. I don't usually give ladies titty twisters. That seems like a little but, like I know, right? We're still being too forward. <laughs> 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 The, speaking of of a, of a titty twister, why not? Oh um, I I, I want to talk because it seems like the mental version of that. The relationship between David and Gwen uh, that we see uh, evolve seemingly it it it's it's hate, but but there there seems to be some sort of a mutual. I want to say respect just because they're the only two sane quote unquote sane adults. They they only have each other. Well, yeah, David's exactly. They're not in, sane. They're in this together, right? They're the only two people crazy enough to do it. So there's yeah. got, like respect's not the right word, but like no. I don't know. Well, we're we're I, in this together. I think so part I of it is a dependency thing on David's part because at one point in one of the episodes, uh, when Gwen isn't there, he's like, "And this is the only, one of the few things I can do without her." Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know if that's like an emotional mm. dependency or like a capability dependency. I think mm. it's a capability thing. Like I think like I think he's been told in no uncertain terms, you cannot do X, Y, Z, theta, alpha, beta, the delta, sure. like he's been given the list. Mm -hmm. 
And despite the fact that he seems to be a continuous titty twister on her brainstem, <laughs> she needs wow. to be there to supervise wow. him. So that's funny that you say that there's a list. Like, I really felt that he just knows that he's incapable of it. Like, right? Like, that's the mental space he's in. Like, no way I can do any like, of that as nonsense. as the list is yeah. rolling up, he's going, no, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no
Ah, is there probably the same stuff that happens between the quartermaster and literally everybody else. I but don't he still think has, discriminates. He still it considers him like a wise elder as because opposed to stay away David. from that creepy son of a bitch. He lives in a fantasy world. <laughs> Disney Guys, Princess David. He lies in bed for eight hours waiting for the next day to come with enthusiasm. I'll say it again. David is not sane. Mm. What, what is, is a quartermaster? He masters the quarter? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Hey. Hey, it's, it's the master of the quarters. So like of the of the like the dwar- like dwarves and yeah, like people live. Oh, that's even darker. Dark. Than he, I realize. He's like he's like the yeah, he's uh, the groundskeeper. The housing. Yeah. He's like the groundskeeper. See yeah. that makes more. That, that makes okay. But quarter that master sounds so yeah, much more I evil. Can, dark, right? I, know, I can right? see like you know, uh, groundskeeper Willie from The Simpsons going down a deep dark path, losing a hand and ending up in a yeah. like very much like the quartermaster that we no, have right now. I would now. love to see Groundskeeper Willie and the quartermaster switch places, like switch shows. <laughs> they would de- grabbing just to a beer see with what would happen together, or would if anyone would notice. <laughs> I just want to hang out with the two of them. I agree. Um, yeah. but, would you like to come back alive? Yeah, dude, yes. I think they, I think like he's fine with the quartermaster because on a long enough timeline people are like are okay, right? Like he's creepy as hell or is what he's he's hands down one of my favorite characters of all time. <laughs> sure. But like look David Sir Survive, so like what's gonna happen to what's gonna happen to Max? Like you know what? Like I lived through this. I probably went on some weird adventure where he stabbed a squirrel and I'm perfectly normal. <laughs> and so will Max be. You you bring very nice. Yeah. Uh you bring up a good point. I think it might be uh the quartermaster handles things that David can't. Yep. Like he was dragging the the blood the, 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 the carcass of something, of something. something. <laughs> the thing that belonged to that skull that you found something um, was in a bag he has a deer <laughs> yeah. kind of lord I have mm-hmm. watched that clip over and over again trying <laughs> to see if you can at all determine what it actually is <laughs> and nothing I honestly think it's a bag and that there's something in the bag yeah, dead. Well, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. That's the definition of dragging <laughs> Ink a bagger. But it was, it's not like you could see what it was. It was just a bag. It was leaking blood. 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 Yeah. blood. Mm-hmm. Most leaking likely. blood. Yay! I don't want to be here. Um. <laughs> Groundskeeper Willie versus Quartermaster Death Battle it's says Norjack in the chat. Oh my god, that was a really good impression. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to say what I was about to say. Um, so we haven't <laughs> we haven't talked at all about. Uh, of these four, my favorite episode, Scout's Dishonor, oh which featured God. the talents of Sam Ireland as Sasha, Aaron, and Tabby with two, two eyes. eyes. Is that Nikki? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Edward, P- Edward Pikeman, uh, who uh, is playing Kirk Johnson, he's going to be in Crunch Time later this year, as well as uh, Billy Nick, Sl- Nick Silp, uh, which, if you don't get that joke, watch some cinema history, uh, played by Snake. Dante Bosco. <laughs> So, we heard a little bit about Dante's experience at the studio. From who? From, from the Camp Camp panel panel. They talked about it. What, they, they you talk, were there. You were wait, there. No, you, no, wait, they, they you, didn't, but they didn't talk about him like actually being there and like recording and stuff, did they? No, they talked about you blacking out. The yeah, that's, 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 what that's what I, I wanted to know. Yeah, what, what, so, what, what, is, what is your relationship with a one Mr. Dante Bosco? Rufio. Right now it's in my head. Okay. But, All um, the best ones are. God, I was so obsessed with Rufio. Yeah. I mean, who wasn't I, of, of like oh, our, our, our generation? Oh, the the old ter- the old turn of phrase. Uh, women want him, men want to be him. Totally. Sort yes. of a thing. He's yep. the coolest kid. Yeah. Yes. And I honestly like I I. I'm sorry, Dante Bosco. I don't even know what you look like right now. <laughs> but he is a good looking like gentleman. The idea of sharing <clears throat> the same like space with him and like thinking that wait maybe we breathe the same air like <laughs> maybe I'm never washing this microphone again no, did you like, smell maybe the pop he spit yeah like... I was like maybe he spit a little on the pop screen and oh, like I'm licking it and so like we're that. like I didn't lick it, it. <laughs> um, and I'm just I happen to be licking it I love it <laughs> this uh, did though, not get creepy at all uh, I love it though I, I will have to say Probably me too. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame you. No, <laughs> like on top of that, uh, huge. I, I think most of us here, Avatar: Last Airbender fans, oh, uh, yeah. Legend, we did. A, you got y'all did a Legend of Korra panel. I, I here. wasn't. Oh, you didn't just Katie. Okay, <laughs> me. sorry, that happened. I found out. Hey, there's a Legend of Korra panel. Oh, it's the series finale. Damn it. Um, <laughs> that was my experience. But um, so yes, he plays uh, one of the Wood Scouts who captures Max while uh, Nikki and Neil get away. Uh, literally stabs him in the back. Yep. He made a vow. Uh, and <laughs> it, it's very short. But I made a vow. 
He did. Uh, Thank you. What is Thank the God. sound clips did you <laughs> prepare for this for after show? Nine? Nine. Ten. 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 Um, Mark also, going above and beyond. Well, also, I'm going to use them for when I engineer shows. Every, if somebody gets a little bit too loud, I'm just going to throw out the motherfucker just a little bit. Um, after Buzz After Dark, immediately explicit. No, no, no. Also, if, evidently, if, Dante Bosco is 40 and really doesn't look like it. He doesn't. No, his face looks exactly the same on an, a, a similar body. And Malachroma has established that whatever was in the bag was the most interesting man in the world, and that we established that out of so right. We did love Malachroma That's so right. much. That's um, right. You're the best. Brain. Totally forgot where I was going with this. Um, That's it, okay. We were licking pop screens a minute ago. Talking about Dante Bosco. <laughs> Always. Nick Slip, he made a vow. Yes. Yeah, he did make, he did make a vow. Um, and what, does, <laughs> what does the addition of uh, Dante, Bas Dante Bosco add to the show in terms of longevity? Uh, sex appeal. <laughs> As it's just like a little stubby kid with an eye patch and a candy cane? Oh, I'm sorry. Are we talking about the character? Yeah, or the, well, <laughs> the voice plus the character and everything together, but... That sex appeal, though. I just... Honestly, having a known voice actor or having a celebrity is not going to make... Hi, I love you. <laughs> is not going to make the show work. Like the show works Elizabeth on Maxwell. its own. <laughs> Will you shut up? I am making an honest-to-God serious point here. Yeah, Jesus Christ, Mark. Right. I'm trying to try doing it without insulting anybody. <laughs> Can I get a quick whack from the board, please? Wait, can I? Can I just? Sorry, can interject. I really, can I just interject something really yes. quick? Please. Um, I had that moment earlier today where I was like, "Oh my God, I've made it! I am a celebrity. I have a wiki feet profile now." You did? Oh, I have a wiki feet profile. I was telling people that, and they're like, "What?" Guys, strangers like to get off on my feet. I like did. I have made it. <laughs> Film Sorry. Panel later uh, the, night, but the point that I'm trying to make is that good voice actors will not save a bad show. A show goes on its own merits. Mm. This is a really good show with really good voice actors. That's what I was getting at. There we go. There we go. There we, we got, got there. there. We got there. there. Let me there. Look, Donica. I'm going got like there. a pop screen. I've got a point to make. I return the favor. Um, we also Jesus. had uh, Flower Scouts uh, where we got to see a little bit of what uh, I mean, are we going to do this as the flower scouts? Got Wi-Fi. We got Wi-Fi. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> it's the best. It's so good. I'm keeping the Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> seeing the relationship between Nikki and the flower scouts uh, and what sort of adds to her uh, bravado as well as establishing that there isn't a certain type of man. There isn't a certain type of woman. It's it's all types. Different strokes to, to rule the world. That's not the lyric, but I'll take nope. with it. I'll go with it. Um, <laughs> why not? Um, it sounded pretty, sound pretty good. Actually, yeah. I liked it. It's, you have to say it with I conviction. Yeah. And don't take it back. Um, what what do you think was Nikki's darkest moment with the Flower Scouts? Ooh, good question. Aside from her uh, being cast out. Her darkest moment, like the one that we didn't show? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, what got her cast out? Oh God, Ooh. I don't. I don't even know if I actually contemplated that. Um, I feel like it had. Like, I feel like maybe it had something to do with periods. Sure. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Well, it, it's I like, like, I like, like it was she, the best. Like, it was Nikki like, would be the one making a tampon gun and like <laughs> okay. causing chaos. I, I get behind that. I or feel she like was a mutual breakup, right? Like they broke up with her, but like admittedly, Nikki wanted out just as right. badly as they wanted to break up with her. So. Right, but I mean, like you know, I, I mean, I think secretly, it, we're not or not so secretly, like it did hurt Nikki's feet. Of course. Mm -hmm. Well, they straight I, up said they ran her out. That's yeah. that's not a mutual breakup. Yeah. That's even if she's not into the quote unquote girly stuff, she clearly wants I to. Could, make friends yeah, and be like true. on good terms with everybody it's even fair, if they're not fair. into the same stuff. Totally fair. I, I think I, going along the, the tampon line, she probably stuffed them up somebody's nose and like they had to like go to the hospital or something. She's like, whoops. Well, Forget I thought the it was raisins. Funny. Why not? Well, and, oh, go ahead. Go she, ahead. she sets up though on the trip over. It's one of my favorite Nikki lines. She says something along the lines of like become an alpha pee on stuff. Like <laughs> so good. And I feel like that was kind of like that teed up the rest of her experience with the, with the scouts. But then also, well, that's really dark, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Max? <laughs> But you can tell she does have like that sort of craving for <laughs> approval in some way because even though she was like, oh, I didn't even want to hang out with them anyway, it's whatever, they're lame. And it turns out that obviously they kicked her out. But then later on in uh, episode four, she immediately gravitate, 
gravitates towards Arid, the cool kid, right. and desperately craves the approval of, you know, this slightly older girl who's just so cool and, and so I, rad. And we also have uh, I Want to Be Cool, if you could play that for us. <laughs> it's so the need, yeah, the necessity yeah. of yes. acceptance after being cast yes. out immediately in the episode before is, first of all, very entertaining, uh, but also very kind interesting. Of sad. Sad, I get, but, yeah. I get a little freaked out sometimes. Like, I wonder if, like, somehow Miles and Jordan were, like, secretly watching, like, <laughs> like in a time machine, yeah. like my childhood, because Nikki and I are, like, so similar. And, like, in eighth grade, I had an experience very similar to Nikki and the Flower Scouts. And then, like, my freshman year of high school, like, I wanted to be cool so bad. Sure. Um, I don't think I betrayed any friends. <laughs> you didn't don't bite. Think. You, didn't, um, you didn't bark at any of your <laughs> Yet. Like, I feel like it. What was that like? So when you first went in and to talk to them about Nikki, how did they pitch Nikki to you? What did they tell you about Nikki? Like, what was the backstory? I know you talk about it while you're in the booth, but I'm interested to hear what, how they set that up. Well, I got, I didn't actually get to talk to anybody because they sent me all the audition materials and they sent the, uh, uh, just like sides from mm -hmm. the, what was then the pilot, it changed. But, um... So, I mean, it's like, you guys have, have seen the episodes. Like, just from reading a couple pages of the script, you, you very get quickly get <laughs> yeah, an sure excellent enough. idea yeah. of, like, who the characters are. Right. And so it, it was very uh, intuitive mm -hmm. for me with with her. Like, I didn't do a lot of, like, research. Or, like, what, what, <laughs> what goes on in her mind? It was just like, How oh, yeah. She How do I, I, I get that? I get that. I get that. I love it. So, but on the, on the reverse side, is there anything that you've taken from Nikki and involved in... And brought into your your life on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I, I have found myself doing the Jordan Swears thing of like, bark, bark, bark. Good. <laughs> or <laughs> like, <laughs> sigh. <Yeah. laughs> or, you know, that, so, so that's definitely one thing. Um, I don't know. A lot of what Nikki does, I like. I bark and meow in real life. <laughs> Second nature. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. You have an animal I don't even in the trust house. You communicate in their language. <laughs> How would Nikki give a titty twister? Is the question with everything she's got? Uh, it's like with her teeth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah actually. Well, that's, but actually, speak, that speaking of right that, answer. while, while uh, going off on that, uh, the back, and back to the animation, the the animation of Nikki's teeth biting Max's staff. Excuse yes. me. Was one of those things. Where it's like oh, that looks really real and visceral. That's bizarre for just like for a quote unquote kid show or a show about kids. This is not a kid show. Show about kids. I was gonna say people get stabbed like a lot. Squirrels get stabbed. Yeah. Uh, the word mighty fuck empires is repeated fall. Yeah. Often. Uh -huh. Oh wait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've uh, already that yeah. a couple the times. The thing about After Buzz is it. The, the content of the after show can match what the content of the show is. So if you're you say so fucking smart. this and that, then like <laughs> you you're not going to come here and expect, well, I like when he said, gee gosh, d d golly darn. Like, no, we got we to talk Watch about the fucking show, for God's sake. However, we did have Miles drop an F-bomb straight on the first episode of the Ruby after show. Oh, that was fun. It took him five minutes to get there. It's still my favorite story to tell. That's good. Um, so we it, it was sort of a, a fun adventure to to have Nikki and Neil find out a little bit more about each other. Yeah. Um, yes. Max found out how much he hated the world, um, and we move on to Camp Cool Kids, uh, where are so the, cool. the coolest. Arid is the coolest person. <laughs> in the world. We just um, got my favorite comment in chat. Mm -hmm. It's from Meow Cider. It's all in caps. And keep in mind that chat is on about a minute, minute and a half delay. And all in caps, it's, oh no, it got kinky again. <laughs> <laughs> You want to talk I'm about that's the teeth bit. <laughs> Favorite comment in chat tonight, and yeah. it's been a high bar, ladies and gentlemen. They ain't seen nothing yet. Oh yeah, my gosh! Uh, we yeah, we're we not talking toss. about episode five. No, we're not. Okay. I <laughs> warn you, child. Um, frightening, frightening, frightening. Um, so we get to see a lot more of the interactions between the other campers and uh, our main three. So we get to see how dispensable everybody thinks of Space Kid, who is yes. arguably one of the, the the most fun of the uh, extemporaneous campers. I can't believe uh, that's Lindsay. I know, just, I was just going to wow. say, I found a bug! Like, it's, oh no, it's a 
my helmet. It's perfect. <laughs> um, also, we get to see the rivalry between uh, Neris and Harrison, or as Tumblr has dubbed them, Neris-son. Neris-son. <laughs> Uh You wake up and stop that. Uh, even though, is, is it bad that the animators of the show are making f- future fan art of when they're older and shipping them? No, so, I just not. saw the that animators of the show finding Rule 42 no. and losing their minds. Oh, that was Lee, too. Lee, yeah, Lee, Lee finding porn was just awful. I think you introduced what? that to that, yeah, to that she, interview as far as I'm concerned. I, no, I, I fault you, Jonica. She, she, no, 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 no. She yeah. asked it. Oh. She was like, did you know there's rooster teeth porn? And oh, I that, accidentally found Ruby right? porn. It's terrible. Oh, oh, it's terrible. I was just searching for winter images. Like, Oh, no. Yeah, the oh, Tumblr no. tag for Ruby porn is NWDE. Oh, no. Nude. Oh, you know what's terrible? Boo. That absolutely terrible. It's I, really clever, though. It's boo. so is Narison. I but, didn't um, come up with it. Really quick, can, thank you for the I final decision. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we play yeah. my my favorite line from Naris, please? Uh. You suck, just <laughs> th- this boy just shot fire out of his hands, and just because he lights David on fire, he sucks. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I love all of Nair, like, because I was a huge, like, I played Dungeons and Dragons yeah. growing yeah, up, like, sure. I never actually friend. LARPed, but, like, I could totally, like, understand getting into it. Everything Nara says, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're so adorable. I have a D&D group now, and it's just like, oh, you're so cute. But I, did anybody n- know that that was Barbara? Not until they said it. Yeah. No. Not, not until they they like because I the the credits usually I'm usually getting very I'm easily distracted so by the time the credits start rolling unless I'm looking mm-hmm. for it um, I usually missed it because I'm like ooh something shiny yeah <laughs> over yeah. yonder. Uh, did you Donegan? Like you asked, but like well, did you I, catch up? Be, because I I was trying to play in the after show for this I was following every little uh, bit that they were throwing out yeah. and Gray threw out um a uh, or Jordan threw out a journal about the voices and I saw that she was gotcha. Naris and I was like which, which one's Naris? I, I mean, know, Maris the sense. cute. I can hear her Jenkins voice. Now in you that. can. Yeah. That yeah. once you yeah. hear who the voices are, you're like, oh yeah, that's Barb. Yeah, it's no, Barb. absolutely. And they have come so far as voice actors. Like it is, it is remarkable. They were unrecognizable if you if you don't know what to listen for. Mm. Like you wouldn't have known. And it's the same with you. If you didn't know what to listen for, I would never guess that Nikki and Winter were played by the same person. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we also got Preston. The theater kid, yeah. uh, finally named. I love <laughs> his wow. You totally so I've played so many shows so with you, and I've never much. seen that. That was incredible. Because I, he said my favorite line in like probably the the span of those four episodes. What, what, what was just, that line? This is just like my Miz. You mean? <laughs> and I'm just like. Can you play that one, Preston? So I love it. And I'm just it, sitting here going, wait a minute, wait a minute. The last time we had a barricade style revolution, a lot of people died. That was the point of Lame. And it, I just Holy love crap. how he immediately got shot down by, don't make this lame. <laughs> make this lame, Preston. And also, on that yeah, same, yeah. I think my favorite line from, from or I have, I have a lot of favorite lines from episode four. But the, um, uh, it's like, hey, what do you, uh, when they were on the campfire, what do you got? Well, I was going to put these down uh, David's underpants. And Spanky goes, I got, shut up. Like the instant. <laughs> <laughs> the instant cutoff of Space Kid. Uh, f- absolutely flipping Just love. immediately dismissed. <laughs> mm. um, and, I mean, Arid, uh, played by the wonderful Jen Brown. Uh, so th- cool. Th- again, yeah. I would She's say so unrecognizable cool. compared to her other roles. Oh, totally. Like, yep. yeah. the, I would say the direct opposite of Pyrrha. To be yeah. sure. Because yep. Pierre is very humble. Yes. And especially in Chibi, she's ridiculously sweet oh my and God. demure. Ever Unfair. Happen. Unfair. Ever <laughs> um, so now that we've gotten a glimpse of more of the campers, who is your favorite camper aside from the main three so far? <laughs> Because I mean, it's pretty easy. You're so I can't choose the quartermaster. Nervous. I can't not. I can't choose the quartermaster. I mean, I, I'm choosing the quartermaster. You it's can't like, choose it's like, an adult. I think it's like Willow when he picks his own finger, right? Do you remember? The, do you remember Willow? <laughs> that sounds terrible. You threw a Willow. I know. I know. Here? Yeah, I'm going to. All right. Obscure pick. All right. Like the Val Kilmer Willow. Yes. I recently revisited that. Have you seen Willow lately? Don't don't go revisit those movies that you liked as a child. No, they're do terrible. do uh, do not. The Willow. Labyrinth is still amazing. I watched it for it yeah is, for Halloween. This is what I did. It's still amazing. But once Although, you notice David Bowie's crotch, you're gone. Oh, I I, I <laughs> That's can't. That's the only thing you can see that whole movie. 
Mm, no that, that's not what that's... you do. That's not what you did. Pre- <laughs> that's not why you watched the that's movie. That's not how you discovered that your sexuality. Dance, 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 magic dance. See, okay, no. <laughs> take a shot every time David Bowie's crotch comes on screen in the labyrinth. And if you're watching 24, take a shot every time they show the clock. Are the two quickest ways to die in uh, terms by of media theme drinking games. I would also say every time a character dies in Ruby, then you kiss you pretty. Aww. Aww. All right. Wait, now wait, that we're wait. back to sad. Wait, so who's who? Who? who who's your favorite character? I said Neris. So you guys weren't listening. He said Quartermaster. I said Quartermaster. I enjoy, I enjoy Max. I know I'm a Max guy. Like, well, honestly, I said, you not, just said the, not the main, not the main three. three. Oh, okay. So I'm not definitely. I'm also not paying attention. What? I'm also not paying attention. <laughs> okay, 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 fair enough. Um, I for for the Les Mis line, I want to throw like Preston in there, but I really loved the. I, I also really love the. I've been prestige. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Harrison's delivery. So, yeah, yeah, no. Yes. So I I have to admit, I have to admit, like as a kid, I thought magic tricks were really. I could never do them, mm-hmm. but I thought magic tricks were really cool. So I'm really like, so yeah, yeah, when he puts cool. the, the we're back in, he's it. like, I can't. That's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so good. So Harrison, I'm gonna get. Charm. <laughs> Uh, it's a wizard's amulet. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be anything it wants to be, just like you kids. Yeah. Um, Doing uh, mental backflips, trying to find something positive about the weird random shit that everyone's pulled up. Right. I mean, I'm German. I'd have to say Dolph. No, not really. Um, okay! I'm, I'm, I'm strangely close to him for some reason. Space, no, kid? Space, kid. space no, kid. No, I said Dolph. Okay. Um, but but Space Kid for I'm sure. Going space, space Kid. Space Kid. So yep. did, I mean going space ev- kid. everybody yep. with only a few lines. They were able to encapsulate what these characters. Even with Nerf, yeah. uh, who yeah. we've barely heard anything from, just sure. like buzzkill and laughing yep. is is really the only thing. But we're still. We we want to see these kids evolve uh, as characters as people, um, and we got a little bit more of. Campbell's illegal activities in this episode as well. <laughs> Travis Willingham is amazing. Brilliant. But also I just the fact the first thing we see Cam is his Cam ankle Campbell. bracelet. He, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Cam just Campbell. Just our knee-jerk reaction for that. It's like, oh, that's voiced by Travis Willingham. And she goes, Roy Mustang. And I go, Grog! <laughs> well. Yep. We all remember our first. Um, Do that. What? <laughs> of the voices of his that we heard. <laughs> well, that's not the first. That's just the most current. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, we. It's been a weird night. It's, I mean, oh my god, I don't know what happened here, but I need to put something in this mug next time. I'm just trying I, to god. stuff a lot into a little space. That's, I don't that's what we're trying to do. Hey, oh, corn syrup. <laughs> Stay thirsty, my friend. Caffeine. <laughs> no running, my friends. Um, <laughs> so, uh, re- really quickly, before we get to our last uh, camp activity of the night, uh, oh we want to talk a little bit more to you, uh, w- uh, with you, Elizabeth. Since we have you here, and we did yeah, a yeah. lot of coverage, uh, we had you on the, the Ruby Volume 4 panel, but because mm-hmm. right now we're sort of in flux on whether or not we can show that panel yet, I just wanted to, one of my favorite questions that we asked you, if you wouldn't mind as well, is what would be your favorite thing that you want to see Winter engage in in Ruby Chibi, if she were oh. to join the cast? Favorite thing that I would want to see Winter engage in, or just um, something that you always wanted to see Winter do. Um, I I I wanted to see her inspect the rooms. Like I wanted to see her reaction oh, okay. to the bunk beds. Okay. Yes. I see that. Um, yes. <laughs> Adding to the structural integrity or lying in each one and falling and hurting herself terribly. She was just too. I don't know about that. I hope that that's the reaction too. <laughs> <laughs> Twice? <laughs> what? She's just like, no, this is mine now. <laughs> just because she's the alpha. Um, <laughs> and, and, I don't know, and I don't know if you... I don't think this is a spoilery question. How do you think Winter took action uh, at the end of the event... At, at During the events of Volume 3 when uh, the beacon is in chaos? Because we didn't see too much of her. Didn't they send her home? She went all, earlier. They on? sent her all the way home. Earlier on, I thought they sent her off, and she was no longer there. I felt right. like no, she, she was she on w- another mission, right? Yeah, she was. She was sent off uh, mm. to to go join like the rest of the army. Like she was. She was not there. Oh, okay. okay, fair play. Um, if I think she, that's been. If she was, that's a spoiler. Right? How how would the tides have been turned mm-hmm. if Winter was there? Um, I like. I mean, this is like a selfish request, but I would have, uh, I would have loved to have seen because I feel like Winter obviously has like a huge sense of duty, mm-hmm. and she also has a huge sense of like familial like responsibility and love, and I think seeing like how she would have have to have wrestled with that like during that crisis mm-hmm. would have been interesting. 
I think so too. Like, do I do my duty or do I find my sister and exactly. make sure she's right. safe? So exactly. It, yes. it, when I think about Winter in that situation, the only thing that comes to mind or that I think would come to her mind is, is Weiss okay? Why? But even before Ironwood, like before yeah. my boss, it's got to mm-hmm. be my sister. I think it would have been fun to see her and Crow have to team up after, God, yes. after their scuffle. Yeah. That would have been great. That might be uh, something we've seen. The battles would have been won a lot quicker if that happened. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm excited to see if that happens in four. So uh, we'll get off the Ruby talk. We'll get, um, uh, something else that uh, just back to the insanity. <laughs> well, no, there, uh, a big project just came out. Uh, you were part of a cast of a Kickstarter um, from LaShawn Thomas, who's responsible for Black Dynamite, and the animation for uh, Legend of Korra, the Boondocks. Bringing it all back. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring it all back. Um, you play a plucky little robot named plucky. Casey Turnbuckle, which is one of my favorite names of a character. <laughs> That's all and I'm right. not just saying that. That's I'm, all right. I'm, yeah. That's really um, cute. How did you get involved in that? Um, through, gosh, sheer luck, man. Yeah? Um, I knew LaShawn uh, previously, but but not through work. Like, it was more through, like, friends and, and personal acquaintances and stuff. And he had the idea that he wanted to, you know, do this Kickstarter and and he's always been one of those people, like, he likes keeping it in the family. Like, he mm-hmm. likes working with people that he, like, knows and trusts. And um, and uh, he said that Casey was, like, the one voice that he was having trouble, like, visualizing in his head, like, what he wanted her to sound sure. like. And uh, I had given him my demo reel, like, months back, and I don't think he ever, like, listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he said that he just, like, happened to, like, be going through, like, some old folders and was like, oh, I should give this a listen. And then one of the voices that I had on my demo reel, he was like, that's Casey! Nah. That's Casey! And so he called me up and he was like, would you like, I mean, maybe want to be a part of this and I was like oh, I would give my left leg to be a part of this <laughs> like, yes. oh my god yes please I'm also happy to see that your legs are intact that you didn't have to <laughs> give didn't them. take you you can only it. see the right one you can't see the left one can you on this angle it's just a stump it's magic um, to duh um, <laughs> so we're, we're super excited to see that uh, short get picked up uh, make sure if you weren't a backer to watch the trailer It's re- it looks like so much fun, especially if you're a fan of LaShawn's other work. Um, unfortunately, we do have to wrap up, so the last thing that we're going to do before we go is, uh, this is a camp activity for you, and it's also going to be a camp activity for us here in oh. the studio. Ooh, so, all right. um, we're, we're going to flex our arts... And, battles. We're, well, um, we're going to flex our arts and crafts camp Ooh. muscles. Mm. So think back to when you were a childhood. If you saw a brochure for camp, camp Cameron Campbell's Camp Campbell, uh, what camp would you be willing to spend the summer on Lake Lilac doing? What kid would you be? Draw a picture of yourself as a kid in... Oh. Uh, not. I mean, don't take one of the ones from the show, because that'd be a little bit too easy, but draw, your, draw, draw yourself as a kid. I was actually inspired by our, our, our friend, 24-Hour Call Center, who drew their own version of a Cam Cam character. So why not, let, let's flex our muscles, draw yourself as a character. Since we have you here, what camp, uh, not to pull too much from Nikki, but what camp uh, would you ideally spend your summer summer at? Survival camp. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Oh. So, Cold like, speaking blooded. of missing a leg, no, <laughs> like, you've got, like, a bear trap, like, on your leg, but you're still walking through it, yeah, and you know, scars. Yeah, that works. Ain't no I that got works. my survival badge in a week. <laughs> that's, a, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> so, um... Unfortunately, we do, we do have to wrap, so we're gonna talk. We're gonna that's what we're gonna start our show with next time. Great, we're gonna. T- are let are you we bringing know. pictures? Are and we're we- gonna and we're gonna <gasps> drop pictures. We're gonna scan them in and we're gonna share them with you. And if you draw Fantastic. yours, make sure to send them to ABTV Camp Camp or follow us on Twitter at ABTV Rooster Team. Send us your pictures there. We want to put you as a part of Camp Campbell yeah. because hell. This show is a lot of fun. This this Come show is a lot of fun. Us. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, in case uh, folks are listening to audio, where can, where can they find you on social media? What other projects do you want to promote? Um, mostly Twitter and Instagram at about Elizabeth M. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just Elizabeth Maxwell on Instagram, <coughs> and uh, uh, I post all about my new projects on there. I can't uh, think off the top of my head what cool. I am, and I'm not allowed to talk about. So. Fair enough. Okay. Pay attention there. 
There you go. <laughs> Katie. I'm Katie Cullen. You can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and YouTube at Kiaxet. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I am also on Snapchat at Kia Prime. Um, my upcoming projects are mostly just that YouTube channel, reaction videos, potentially vlogs. We have After Buzz TV shirts. They are on T Public, also under Kiaxet. So, yes, have fun. Do the thing, win the stuff. Patrice. Do the, do the thing, win the stuff. I'm Peter the D is on Twitter. I also host a video game. Laughs every time I say that Twitter handle. I do. Uh, you can find me also on iTunes. I host a gaming show called Pixel by Pixel. It's a bunch of nonsense. It's because it's step Boy. Yeah, it's that boy. Uh, Megan. Oh shit, what stuff up? and things and things and stuff. Hey guys, I'm Megan. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Mengwin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. I'm also on a bunch of shows here at After Buzz, and I write articles for the Movie Chick. That's Chick with two Ks. Be sure to check those out. <laughs> Uh, I did that one time. Um, uh, I'm the owner of Mark B. Donica. You can find me on Twitter at Mark B. Donica. You can follow all of us at ABTV Rooster Team. That's where you can find uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, we have an Instagram. All of our interviews are on our YouTube channel. If you go to ABTV Rooster Team, we have a playlist that has everything from the first night uh, as well as all of our sit down interviews. And we're working on seeing if we can put our panels up. So stay tuned to that ABTV Rooster Team. Me at uh, Mark B. Donica. All of us here at AfterBuzz TV. Make sure to like us on iTunes, like us on this page, leave us comments, and send us the picture of your campers. Until I then, cannot uh, wait. we will see you oh, next time at Camp Adia! Camp Adia! Camp Adia. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Camp -A Diem! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.